Welcome to our exploration of social psychology. Have you ever wondered why you behave differently in a group compared to when you're alone? In this video, we'll delve into how social factors and personality variables interact in our everyday lives. Whether it's through the influence of cultural norms, the impact of group dynamics, or instances of pro-social behavior, understanding these concepts can help us make sense of both individual and collective behavior. From group polarization to social facilitation, we'll cover essential ideas that will provide you with a deeper insight into human behavior. Throughout this journey, you'll see how these concepts apply to real-life situations and hopefully gain a better understanding of yourself and others. So sit back, relax, and let's get started on this fascinating journey into the world of social psychology. Let's start by diving into how groups can exert a powerful influence on our behavior and mental processes. Cultural phenomena play a significant role in shaping how groups operate and influence individuals. For example, cultural norms dictate the behavior that is considered acceptable within a group, impacting how we think and act. Group membership also heavily influences our actions. When we identify with groups, we absorb their values, beliefs, and behaviors, which can either enhance or inhibit our personal development. Lastly, consider the impact of performing in front of others. The mere presence of an audience can alter how we behave, sometimes enhancing our performance due to social facilitation, or conversely, increasing anxiety and hindering our capabilities. It's fascinating to see how these interrelated aspects come into play, demonstrating that our behavior is not solely a product of individual choice, but is significantly shaped by the groups we belong to. Next, let's delve into the fascinating world of prosocial behavior. At its core, prosocial behavior involves actions intended to benefit others. One prime example is altruism, the selfless concern for the well-being of others. Altruism can manifest in countless ways, from simple acts of kindness, like helping someone carry groceries, to more significant commitments, like volunteering your time or resources for a cause. Through these selfless acts, individuals promote positive social interactions and foster a sense of community. Now, let's explore another crucial concept, the bystander effect. This phenomenon occurs when the presence of others discourages an individual from intervening in an emergency situation. Essentially, the more witnesses there are, the less likely any one person is to help. This counterintuitive outcome is driven by a diffusion of responsibility, where each person assumes someone else will take action. Understanding the bystander effect can help us recognize situations where we might need to step up and take initiative, rather than waiting for someone else to do so. Both altruism and the bystander effect show us that our actions, or inactions, have significant impacts on those around us. By being aware of these concepts, we can be more mindful of how we contribute to the social fabric of our communities. In essence, prosocial behavior isn't just about big gestures. It's also about everyday actions and decisions that promote empathy, solidarity, and cooperation among individuals and groups. Culture plays a pivotal role in shaping how we think, feel, and act. To truly understand behavior, we need to dive into the nuances of cultural influence. Let's start with tight and loose cultures. In tight cultures, social norms are strict and deviations are not easily tolerated. Contrarily, loose cultures are more permissive, allowing for a wider range of behaviors. This distinction impacts everything from everyday interactions to broader societal functioning. Next, let's explore individualism versus collectivism. Individualist cultures prioritize personal goals and independence. Here, success and self-reliance are valued above all. Conversely, collectivist cultures emphasize group harmony and interdependence. In these societies, the needs of the group often outweigh individual desires. Lastly, we have multiculturalism. This concept refers to the coexistence of diverse cultures within a single community or nation. Multiculturalism promotes tolerance and encourages learning from different traditions and perspectives. Understanding these cultural concepts helps us appreciate the diversity of human behavior. It also provides insight into how our backgrounds shape our perceptions and actions. So remember, culture isn't just a backdrop, it's an active dynamic force influencing our daily lives. Group dynamics can have a profound impact on our behavior. Let's delve into some of the most significant phenomena in this area. 
First, we have group polarization. This happens when group discussions lead members to adopt more extreme positions than they initially held. Imagine a group of friends talking about their favorite movie genre. As they discuss, their opinions become even more strongly aligned or opposed to certain genres, more so than if they'd never had the conversation at all. Next, there's groupthink, a concept introduced by psychologist Irving Janis. This occurs when the desire for harmony and conformity in a group results in irrational or dysfunctional decision-making. For instance, in a business meeting, people might go along with a risky plan just to maintain consensus. Then, we have diffusion of responsibility. This happens when individuals in a group are less likely to take action because they assume someone else will. It's why people in large crowds often fail to help someone in distress. Everyone thinks somebody else will step in. Social loafing is another key concept. It refers to the tendency of people to put in less effort when working in a group compared to when they are working alone. You may have experienced this in group projects where some members slack off, relying on others to carry the load. Lastly, there's de-individuation. This occurs when individuals lose their self-awareness and sense of personal responsibility in a group, often leading to impulsive and deviant behavior. Think of how people might act at a wild concert or during a riot. By understanding these concepts, we can better navigate group settings and recognize how our behavior might be influenced in these dynamics. Whether it's at school, work, or social gatherings, being aware of these psychological tendencies helps us make more informed decisions. Social facilitation and social traps are essential concepts when trying to understand group behavior. Let's begin with social facilitation, which refers to how the presence of others can boost our performance on simple tasks, but hinder it on more complex ones. For instance, think about the last time you had to give a presentation in class. The audience probably made you feel more alert and perform better if you were prepared. However, if you were nervous or unsure, their presence could have made things worse. This illustrates the complex relationship between social settings and individual performance. Next, we have social traps. These occur when individuals act in their self-interest, which can lead to negative outcomes for the group. A classic example is the tragedy of the commons, where people overuse a shared resource, ultimately depleting it for everyone. Social traps highlight the importance of group goals and interests. Balancing these can prevent self-destructive behaviors and promote collective well-being. Group goals and shared interests also play a significant role in shaping behaviors within social settings. When a group works towards a common objective, it can enhance cooperation and foster a sense of unity. However, conflicting interests within the group can lead to discord and competition, impacting overall group dynamics. By understanding these concepts, students gain insights into how social interactions and group settings influence individual actions. This knowledge helps to navigate social environments effectively, whether in school, at work, or in the community. Understanding social facilitation and traps provides a foundation for fostering positive group dynamics and avoiding common pitfalls in collaborative settings. Finally, let's dive into some key terms related to prosocial behavior. First, we have altruism, which refers to selfless actions intended to benefit others. Next, the social responsibility norm, a societal rule that tells us we should help those in need. Then, there are superordinate goals, these are shared goals that require cooperation and ultimately benefit all parties involved. The bystander effect describes the phenomenon where the presence of others reduces the likelihood that any one person will help someone in distress. Social exchange theory, on the other hand, suggests our social behavior is the result of an exchange process where we aim to maximize benefits and minimize costs. Lastly, the reciprocity norm refers to the expectation that people will respond to each other in kind, returning benefits for benefits. Understanding these terms is crucial as they provide a framework for interpreting prosocial behavior in our everyday lives. Stay tuned for more insights. Now that we've covered the key concepts, let's discuss how you can apply these ideas in your daily life. Think about the social situations you encounter regularly, how your behavior changes in a group setting, or how you react when someone needs help. Reflect on instances where you've seen the bystander effect in action. 
or when you felt motivated to engage in altruistic behavior. Consider how understanding group dynamics can help you navigate social traps or facilitate positive group interactions. By connecting these concepts to your personal experiences, you can gain deeper insights into your behavior and relationships. Understanding social psychology not only helps you understand yourself, but also encourages empathy and more effective communication with others, promoting a healthier, more connected community. To wrap up, let's recap the key concepts we've covered. We've explored how group dynamics, pro-social behaviors, and cultural influences shape individual behavior. Understanding these elements is crucial for navigating social situations effectively. By applying social psychology principles, you can improve your interactions and foster healthier relationships. Remember, reflecting on your own experiences and observing the behavior of others can provide invaluable insights. As you continue to study, use the knowledge from this video to enhance your understanding of the complex social world around you. We encourage you to reflect on your own experiences and consider how the concepts from social psychology apply to your daily life. Understanding these concepts can help you navigate social situations more effectively and improve your interactions with others. So think about how group dynamics, cultural influences, and pro-social behaviors have shaped your world. Apply what you've learned to better understand yourself and the people around you. By doing so, you'll gain valuable insights that can enhance both your personal and social life. Thank you for watching and continue exploring the fascinating world of social psychology.